Atomos has just released the first major update to the Atomos Shinobi 2 monitor, and it's got some great features that we've been hoping for. First up, touch to focus. You can now touch the display of your Atomos Shinobi 2 to set a focus point, just like you can to the LCD of your camera. Now, unfortunately, not a whole lot of cameras are supported at launch, but Atomos assures me that they are working as quickly as they can to add more and more cameras. For still photographers, we now have the ability to trigger a photo from the display. Video shooters were always able to start and stop recording from the monitor. Still photographers were kind of left out of the initial launch, but now you have the ability to trigger a still photo from the monitor. For video shooters, they've also added RE false color and EL zone support. That gives us two additional options for monitoring exposure through color. And finally, both Nikon and Fuji have gained support in the Atomo Shinobi 2. The full list of cameras that are supported are on their website. Check out the URL on your screen and you can find out if your camera is supported. In this video, we're gonna look at where to get the update, how to install it, and then I'll show you all the new features. So let's get into it. To get the update, head to atomos.com and under the support column, go to firmware updates, Scroll down and select Shinobi. And at the top of the list should be the Shinobi 2 with the current update version 11.02. Simply click download firmware update to get the download. This will download a zip file that once extracted will have three .bin files in it. You're going to need a freshly formatted SD card to load the update. But since the Shinobi isn't a recorder itself, it can't actually format the card for you. So you need to put the SD card into your computer and format it there. On Mac OS, launch Disk Utility, select the card, click Erase, and choose MS-DOS FAT. On Windows, right-click on the SD card, choose Format, and set it to NTFS. Once the format is complete, copy all three of the .bin files to the top level of the SD card. And now you're almost ready to update. You do need to ensure that your Shinobi either has a sufficiently full battery or is powered over USB-C from a minimum 10 watt power supply. This small rig NP battery that I have on here will tell me what's left and it says I've got 78%. I think that'll do. And that's important because as with any firmware update on any hardware, it's really critical that it doesn't lose power mid update. If you want to see what firmware version you're currently on, just so you can verify the update, then on the Shinobi, from the basic menu, tap on the gear icon, then tap info, and it'll show you the current version. I'm at 11.01.01, .01, which of course was the previous minor update. To shut it down, press and hold the power button, and then it's time to insert the SD card. Now a little word of warning here, it may look like the SD card should just go in this way, but that is not the case. It actually goes in this way, upside down. And if you put it in the other way, it actually will go all the way in, it just won't lock. And then you'll have to kind of pull it out. That's how you know that you put it in the wrong way. When you get it in right, you get that resounding click. To start the update, just press the power button, hands off for a few moments, and the update will begin. When it's completed, you'll be prompted to restart. The official instructions actually say, before you restart, please wait for a few seconds to give the Shinobi 2 some extra time to complete the update. Interesting, but I can follow directions sometimes. My wife might disagree. Now hold down the power button until it shuts down. Then wait a few seconds and press the power button to turn it back on. We'll check the version number again, tap the gear menu, tap on info, and sure enough, it's at version 11.0.2. All right, now let's see what this thing can do. Before we check out the new Shinobi features, I want you to check out my new sponsor, Backblaze. If you're not familiar with Backblaze, you should be. It's the cloud backup service that I've been using for over 15 years. No matter what you're doing to backup your computer, if there's not an off-site component, then you're not doing enough. I'm truly passionate about backup. As someone who's been using computers for <laughs> years, I've lost more than my fair share of files to angry hard drives or tech that's grown legs. The only way to ensure you don't lose data is to backup. Not weekly, not daily, but constantly. Backblaze runs silently in the background, constantly checking for new files or changes to files and uploading those to the cloud. If the worst does happen, you can log into your Backblaze account from any web browser or even a mobile app and find your data. I've even used it as a way to pull files from a computer that's not missing, but simply offline since all of its data is already in the cloud. 
Visit backblaze.com slash photojoseph for a free trial. And do be sure to use the slash photojoseph so they know that I sent you. All right, let's find out what these new Shinobi 2 features look like. First, let's check out touch to focus. Here's the short list of currently supported cameras for this new feature. Unfortunately, it's not a long list, but Atomos assures me that they are working hard to add more as quickly as they can. On the Lumix side, the S52 and the S52X are currently supported, so I've got my S52X here. I've mounted my Shinobi on the camera with my Condor Blue Cage, using of course both an HDMI cable and a USB-C cable, as the USB-C cable is how this communicates. Incidentally, with this configuration, this big small rig battery is now powering the entire rig, including the camera. Let's set a couple things up in frame. To activate tap to focus, tap on the name of your camera up in the top, and then under the control tab, you'll see tap to focus needs to be enabled. Now with that on, I simply tap on the screen to wherever I want it to focus on. Now that is pretty cool. And that's basically it. If you want to turn it back off so that you can touch the screen without worrying about changing focus, just disable it in there. Next up, the still photography mode. Just like with the video tap to focus, you do need to set this up in the menus. I'll go to the camera menu again, and then under control, right next to where it says tap to focus, you'll see it says trigger mode currently set to video. Tap that and it changes to photo. You'll also notice that this little icon down here has changed to an aperture icon. We'll close that. And of course the camera is already in photography mode. It's currently in aperture priority. To take a picture, just tap the button and it takes a picture. Now let's see if we can combine this with tap to focus. I'm sure you can. Back to the camera menu, enable tap to focus, tap there, in focus, tap here, focus again. Awesome. Now incidentally, if you are in photo mode on the camera, but you don't enable photo mode on the recorder, when you press the record button, it will actually start recording video, just like with the camera, if you push the red button, even if you are in the photo mode, it starts recording video, same thing. Next up, the new false color modes. There's RE false color and EL zone. To activate them, first, if you're in the camera mode, tap the camera icon to exit that. This is where you have all the display options that you have for your monitor and tap on this little guy here. When you tap on it the first time, it brings up the standard false color mode. Tap it again, and it switches to Ari. And tap it again, and it switches to EL zone. And you can see a little indicator on the icon telling you what mode it's in. Now, honestly, I'm not familiar with EL zone. I only heard about it recently, and I understand it's a really popular false color mode. So if that's something you guys are interested in, let me know, and I'll do my homework, figure out how it works, and do a video on it. Let me know in the comments below. And that's all the new features. Remember that Nikon and Fuji support has been added as well. So be sure to check out if your camera is now on the supported list at the URL on screen. It's worth noting though, that this list is only the cameras that Atomos has actually tested. Your camera might already be supported, just not be on the list. The Shinobi uses the same protocols that the various camera manufacturers use to control their cameras from a computer. If your Lumix camera is compatible with Lumix Tether, or your Canon camera works with EOS Utility, or your Sony Alpha works with Imaging Edge Desktop, then chances are good that the Shinobi 2 will work for you. Thanks for watching. Thanks again to Backblaze for supporting the channel. And if you haven't already, go back up your computer. Ha, you thought I was gonna say subscribe, didn't you? Okay, you can do that too. See you in the next video.